All right. Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, we're playing the silver case tonight. My name is Kels. Um, I am the person behind the controller. Feels really weird to say that considering the fact that there's no one else talking, but you know what? I'm just going to keep talking apparently, uh, <laughs> rather than make sense. Um, so we're on the silver case tonight. Um, I gave a poll on Twitter, um, and this was the clear winner, so I am actually really glad that you guys are enjoying this, because I always get a little bit nervous on the ones where I'm just doing a lot of reading. Um, but I think that this game is very interesting, and it's just going to get more interesting. So, uh, let's do a quick recap, because I think we need to sort of recap some of the stuff that was happening, um, and I cannot blame people for being confused or getting lost, because playing this game in short chunks is uh makes it a little bit harder to understand i think so uh i'm not entirely clear on what was happening last time what i do know is that we must fight the bartender for red's honor we do like how dare he not think that red is the cutest turtle in history and i just knocked something over it's fine uh like how dare he i was all like team bartender for a bit but this was a betrayal of the highest highest honor. Uh, Minorikama and Kyoko might have a psychic connection via cup noodle. Um, I think Koichi pushed someone to their death and it was ruled a suicide and Minorikama is sus of how much Kyoko is looking into the matter. Okay, so let's kind of recap the case before. Um, so, the remember when we started the case, um, it was because someone had fallen to their death um, in the apartment complex. And so, after so they had kind of thought that it was a suicide. What we found out at the end of the case was that Koichi had actually pushed the guy because the guy had been responsible um, for killing his friend. So, um, and that, I think it, I don't remember who has the conversation at the end um, of the tranquilizer side, but um, it's, he talks um, a little bit about, you know, how children's innocence kind of brings them to do that. Um, so Koichi is the one who killed the dude that fell from the balcony because he was responsible for his friend having the heart attack. All right, and I think the cops have a boss called Afro and are dealing with an abduction situation involving a sex dungeon and the succession crisis of a major corporation. Maybe. Yeah, so we've got like this weird fairy tale thing going on um, where Sumio told us a weird story. Um, and I think it's a major politician or something that has been kidnapped um, and is currently kind of being ransomed. Um, so go ahead and jump right in because we got to find out what the hell is going on. Okay, so we're going to continue in parade. Oh, that's right. Now we're chasing after him. So we think we found the person who did it. Okay, so movement. That's right. We've got this weird... Oops. Okay, next tank. Yeah, we've got our weird um, semi-English. Okay. Okay. Uh, am I supposed to know what that meant? Am I a robot? Okay. Okay. Okay, thanks man. Alright, let's take a look at the cable box. Tear off. Um, okay. How do I tear it off? Um, indirect. Look, it, I don't understand how they do their shit. Um, Okay. 
to what do I need to do? Okay, well, I opened the cable box. I'm not seeing anywhere else to go. Do I have something else in my inventory? Ooh, I have a stun gun. Maybe that's it. I'm not sure that that's how that works, but uh, good luck. Hey, at least he's kind. All right. The radio is back up. Nike, where are you now? What's the situation? We've got him. This position would be smokestacks? What's the suspect thinking? Where are they gonna trade? They're using the smokestacks to... Nike, they're not here. Check the surrounding. The radio's out again. That's probably not a good sign. Okay, so they're not here. Uh, it, is it gonna explode like the last thing exploded? Because we're a little too close to it again. Oh no, that's that's a dude. Hi. How you doing, man? Can I do some tightrope walking? I'm gonna guess he's not actually walking across that. Okay, so we have a briefcase. Exactly. Uh, buddy? Buddy, you got some issues with your mouth. Bye. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know if it's a fake eye or if it's just one of those things that, like, um, you see, uh, I think they're jewelers or whatever, uh, wear. You know, like the little magnifying monocle. Mm, that's probably not a good sign. He looks pretty dead. All right, July 27th, 1999. It's a Tuesday. Office 24. 8.39 a.m. We've got him back unharmed. Is this okay? Isn't it? We got the chairman back unharmed. Yukimura is stuck with a 600 billion yen loss. <sighs> Yukimura's finished, I guess. Finished? Why? The use of public funds was shot down. He had to pay it off himself. In Yukimura's current condition, he can't handle something of that scale. Right? So, he's finished. The wounds the suspect inflicted were deep. I guess that was their target. Most likely. Rather than money, screwing Yukimura over may have been their real goal. The guy jumped into a smokestack. As for the guy thought to be the actual perpetrator, we have no ID on him. There weren't even any bones left. We have no way of finding out what it was he was after. What about the diamond? Same as the suspect's body. It hasn't been found. The 600 billion yen diamond is thought to have probably been burned up in the extremely high temperature. The diamond doesn't turn to ash. Or didn't turn to ash, rather. What a waste. Uh, pardon me. From Central? My name is Kosaka. Is Kusabi here? 
He's in the back room. Go on in. Thank you. Excuse me. My name is Kosaka from Central. Hey. What's up, you guys get it cleaned up? Yes. We've finished removal. Where's Afro? He went back to Central. He said to send you his regards. Regards for what? I believe he's trying to scout you. Tell him I'm too expensive. I'll tell him. I'm kidding. Okay. How's your stomach? Like a medal of honor. Thank you. And? I just thought I'd say hello. Thank you for all your help. Oh. Well. Good luck at your new job. Thank you. Let's get together again sometime. It would be an honor. It'd be better if that time never came, but... I agree. Crime can ruin one's heart. Even innocent bystanders can be greatly affected. Reducing that exact thing is our job. You mean covering it up? Close, but not exactly. I had thought there was something wrong with the way Heinous Crimes Unit works, using disposal as a method of solving crimes, but I've started doubting my opinion on the matter. The idea of bringing everything to light is... Grave? No. So far, the case we're working on has yet to claim a single person's life, and we're on our way towards solving it. Yeah. Maybe the perpetrator's motivation was simply to act? To me, it feels like it was some sort of demonstration. They've committed plenty of crimes with plenty of victims, but without showing their motive. There are many crimes for which the purpose isn't clear. What are you trying to say? I don't know. I don't know, but... I feel like the fact that the perpetrator has put together such a huge scale puzzle means that they're trying to say something to the world. You think too much. Do I? I can't explain it properly, but sometimes the commission of a crime can provide one with a position to assert themselves. This time, whoever is doing this was able to perpetrate their crimes without a single death. They've left some sort of message, but at the same time they've left others with scars. The information distributed by the media is going to cause a great number of people to fall victim to their crimes. So I feel that covering up the very crime itself is a necessary evil. Evil, huh? And, by covering everything up, we take away the chance for certain people to assert themselves. That is to say, the chance for the weak to fight back. They'll be left with no way. Hmm. Whether or not that's actually necessary, I just don't know anymore. Sounds like you've gotten in too deep. I get what you're trying to say, but that's some naive bullshit. You need to get rid of any superfluous emotions. Totally nuke them. Just look at what's right in front of your eyes. Keep your eyes on the prize. Stare down the enemy in front of you. That's how you investigate. Don't worry. Any part of your brain wants to start worrying? Drill that shit up and eat it. Am I wrong? Dude, look. <laughs> Telling a dude who has anxiety just, like, don't have anxiety anymore is peak kusabi. You're right. I think I'd been getting a bit soft. I will repent. I'll throw everything I have into this investigation. Not that bad. I'll be on my way. Alright, who do we got now? I will agree with that. Kusabi's words do line up with how Kyoko described her detective training. Like, kind of cold-hardened criminal kind of stuff. Uh, July 31st, 1999, Saturday, 10.50 a.m. at the office. Naka, you seen Sumio? Nope. Sumio? I saw him. Where? Here? When? Yesterday? Motherfucker. Get it. Sumio went out. Where? No idea. Oh yeah, that's right. 
today the Yukimura Zaibatsu is holding an emergency board meeting. Today? And then today's Saturday? It's apparently a secret meeting. So they plan on making some huge decisions behind their employees' backs, huh? It's always the uninformed lower downs who end up getting screwed. Hopefully that's all that happens. Alright, let's find out what's going on at, at the Yukimura Zaibatsu. At 2 p.m., the snow tower. Alright, up in the president's room. Emergency board meeting. Chairman, thank God you're safe! So you're back, you bastard. We've been waiting for you. You should have fucking died. Chairman, we're all so glad you're unharmed. I got the looks on all these assholes' faces. Do you need any more time off? Shit, the son of a bitch came back. I know a good hot spring. I'll set up a reservation for you right away. That's it. Leave a good impression. Our company is nothing without our chairman. Please don't overexert yourself. Yeah, you've still got some use. All employees in the security department have been fired. Responsibility. What a crock of shit. All Yukimura departments and divisions are working at normal capacity. All of us members of the board have been awaiting your return. The last time I bow down to you. Everyone. Good work during my prolonged absence. Your words have touched my heart. I apologize deeply for all the trouble. Now, I have a favor to ask of you all. The history of Yukimura was one of glory and honor, but that history was built upon many sacrifices. I want to liquidate that history, right here and now. As of today, I want to put an end to, the, to it. Everyone, it's time to wash your sullied bodies clean. Die together with Yukimura. Oh shit. Forgive me, brothers. Um, I don't think Snow Tower is going to become a snowman tower. I think Snow Tower is going to become a snow pile of ash and rubble. So you guys were on the same, uh... <coughs> same, uh, idea. It's, maybe someone in the meeting does have mind reading powers, or really, it's probably just like common sense. All right, August first, nineteen ninety nine, Sunday, Office twenty four, eight forty a.m. It's been blown to bits. What has? No tower. I have no words. The Yukimura Zaibatsu has been destroyed. The remaining land and buildings have been sold off to the government. All the proceeds will go towards paying back Chairman Yukimura's ransom money. So it all went exactly as the perpetrator planned. As if they were specifically targeted, only the management was killed in the explosion. Central's gonna be treated like a joke. Us too. Things are gonna get rough. It looks like Sakaguchi took the fall. He took full responsibility to ensure his subordinates' jobs. What about that one guy? The big one. Kosaka? He went with Sakaguchi on his own volition. Where? A new assignment somewhere out in the sticks. Hmm. I see. That's just gonna be sad. Do I look like that much of a bitch to you? Oh, you were here? Naka, I want to look into Yukimura's business. For information on the company, you can check the internet. No, I mean all of it. This case isn't over yet. I want to bring up all of Yukimura's history. Give the souls of the dead some fucking peace. Alright, let's dig into this giant Zaibatsu.
Have we found Sumio yet? Or is he just, like, hanging out somewhere? Alright. At the Yukimura Zaibatsu Warehouse. 4.58 p.m. Search and seizure. Big dick. We're gonna take these materials and check them from cover to cover. It's a pretty ridiculous amount. I'm gonna start bitching about it. Okay. Yay, we got a security guard. Alright, take a look at things. around the room. Doesn't seem to be much. Weird, like, architecture cubicles. What looks like sample text. Not quite lorem ipsum, but it's something. Set for release in 2002. Nemo Suite Series Royal. People's lifestyles change with the times, but life's true necessities never really change. The Yukimura Group presents a whole new lifestyle. Nemo Street, Nemo Suite Royal. The Yukimura Group, bringing the future closer. 0026. Okay. That might be useful for something in the future. Check out this other room. Announced in 1974, Nemo Suite Series First Period Advance. Cutting edge features for the modern age. Total comfort and high level safety measures. Yukimoto Group's Nemo Suite. The Yukimoto Group, a conglomeration that cares about the future. 7400. Okay, so 7426, I think, is our. I put those together. Okay, well. I don't even know if I'm supposed to put those together, but. Document storage is underground. How can we get down there? Oh, wait, can I? Correct. My security guard? Okay, so. Oh, no. Uh, it was seven, four, two, six, I think. Who wasn't? Yeah, it must not have been. Um. Okay, so I remember seven. Oh, I didn't hit the OK button. I hit the exit button. Never mind. Exactly. Look, you know, like, some people like to have art in the middle of their room or a couch. Um, this chairman wants to have a scale model of the city in the center. Yeah, we hit exit. Uh, I apparently don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so take a look around. Oops. We're gonna dig up Yukimura's history. Check out all these materials. Don't start bitching. 
Okay, confidential document number seven. Date, 9-12-1979. Case name, completion of Diru Yukimura murder investigation. Processing, deletion. Upon the arrest of the suspect, the investigation of the murder of Diru Yukimura has finished as of today. With the self-surrender of the main perpetrator, XXXX, this case was solved and closed swiftly. Two accessories, blank and blank, are said to have died while avoiding capture. Details have been reported in the HC unit case file. You know what? Let's see if we can find the first one. Okay, here we go. Confidential document number one. Uh, date 7 16 1970. Case name Relationship between the Yukimoto Zaibatsu and Attorney X. Uh, regarding the induction to factory construction plan for Mikumo Village number 32, Mikumo 77, apparently a large sum of money was exchanged between the Yukimoto Zaibatsu and the attorney in the name of political donations. Information received from a source. The day before entering into an open investigation, X gives him orders to stop. On the same day, X and X from the X unit are in ordered to fully investigate Mikumo 77 and the Yukimura Zaibatsu, and constant reports are demanded for Yukimura's background check. From this day forward, anything pertaining to this case is, is considered to be highly confidential. Report provided in the XXXX department. Okay. Confidential document number four. Uh, February 16, 1979. Suspicions regarding waste from Mikumo 77. In accordance with requests from the residents, the water quality inspection of the XX River has been performed. The, the inspection is rumored to have stretched out two years due to X controlling things behind the scenes. Regarding the water's safety, the X Division of the X Department of the Ministry of Health and Welfare has given the go sign. Harmful materials were not found among the materials with the waste. It seems there's no problem with water quality. At one point, residents staged a demonstration in front of the factory, but with word of this report spreading, the situation has calmed down. Recently, standoffs between residents and the factory have been occurring frequently. Some residents' behavior has been extremely inflammatory, and some of it is considered to be somewhat extraordinary. It is well known that this has been caused by the discord between the residents and Yukimura, but this should probably be tranquilized by us before it gets further out of hand. Exactly. Look, like... We are not competent whatsoever. Uh, okay, confidential document number two, February set, February November second, nineteen seventy-five. Influence of protests against construction of Mikumo seventy-seven. Group opposing the construction of Mikumo seventy-seven has lost final appeal appeal to Supreme Court. Subsequently, construction has been legally approved and is set to begin at the beginning of the year. At dawn on October 31st, the representative of the group leading the appeal is reported missing. On October 31st, the anti-construction group held a meeting which, represent, which a representative attended. After the talks, which la lasted till night, X, heading home with X, reports that X said they would go propose a mutual compromise to Yukimura. Afterwards, X went missing and has apparently not returned home. Additionally, at the meeting, X was significantly drunk and it is possible that some sort of accident occurred. However, according to X, when they last saw X, X was no longer that drunk. Also, X was preparing to head to the Yukimura mansion, so it is possible that X went to the Yukimura mansion. The X investigation is set to continue throughout the week. All right, confidential document number six. Case name, mysterious points regarding the Niru Yukimura murder case. I Dawn on August 7th, the body of a girl estimated to be 7 to 8 years old was found. Approximately 5 days had passed since the time of death, and decomposition had been progressing. The body shows, showed signs of violence, leading the decision to treat it as a homicide case. Today, the body was identified. The girl's name is Nido Yukimura, age 7. She lived with her parents, members of the Yukimura family line, in the Mikumo village, and her parents were in charge of factory management. With regards to the Nido Yukimura murder case, several... Mysterious points have been brought up. 1. When the body was discovered, injuries suggested the actions of a single individual deviant, but the subsequent autopsy report indicates the possibility of multiple perpetrators. 2. The time of death was determined to be right in the middle of the parade demonstration put on by the residents, but there was not a single witness. The crime is thought to have been planned, but the location in which the body was dumped made it relatively easy to find. 3. Although the seven-year-old girl was missing, the missing person's report and search request was not filed until three days after her disappearance. 
1954. Around the same time as the crime, three children who live in the village were apparently badly injured in a strange accident. Details are unclear, but the name of one of the boys involved has been found. The children involved were known to be friends of Nido Yukimura. The residents were extremely uncooperative regarding the investigation into Nido's murder. This is likely also due to the discord with Yukimura. Okay, so what do we know so far? Uh, basically, the there's construction going on at Mikumo 77, this tiny, like, Mikumo village. Uh, they did do an, auto an updated autopsy on her. Um, the villagers are not really cooperating, and now there's a dead seven-year-old girl. So, this is going great. Okay, confidential document five. Case name, suspicions regarding waste from Mikumo 77, edited. They, upped up, they updated this. Uh, in the report from February 16th, 1979, it was stated that the water from the X River had nothing wrong with it. But the X group performed a separate top secret investigation, and it was reported that the water was found to contain harmful materials from the factory waste. Wastewater was collected and checked for confirmation, and an inspection was requested within the department, from which the following was found. Materials similar to X hydrochloric acid were discovered, and these materials can shut down the parasympathetic nerve system. This causes excitement, dizziness, and hallucinations in some people. Additionally, materials similar to X were also found, which caused the overproduction of angiotensin II hormones. Don't know what those are. Uh, these materials contain narcotic materials and are highly addictive. If these results are factual, then the factory would prove to be extremely dangerous to the Mikumo village. Measures must be taken immediately, just in case a wastewater sample is being sent together with the report. What a surprise. Who would have thought that a company moving in might have uh, falsified a uh, environmental report? All right, confidential document number eight, uh, October 9th, 1979. The drugs contained in the Mikumo 77 factory waste processing. Processing uh, information partially publicized. All right, report. According to the drugs apparently contained in the runoff, according to Invex Investigator X, fabrications by X have been discovered. Reports were determined to be completely false, and X has been terminated and is currently being held by X. And... Confidential document number three. Uh... May 17th, 1977, uh, Inheritable Heinous Crimes. I should point out, like, a weird, like, tangent, but, like, the names of the months in English are really hard to remember. Like, there, there's no link that I can find between the name of the month and the number. Anyways, um, so report. While undertaking Yukimoto's background check, information was received from a surprising source. Inside history of inheritable heinous crimes stored in the HC unit materials room, the X family line was discovered. The X family line is old and was able to be traced back 13 generations. Among those, including the historic criminal X, were eight names. Additionally, the land on which the Mikumo 77 factory is set to be completed this year was found to be the spot on which X was shot to death by the HC unit. It is unknown whether Yukimura purchased this land and built the factory knowing this fact. However, it doesn't seem to be a simple coincidence. Many residents are already filing complaints about the factory. There's a rumor that waste from the construction site has been flowing into the river, which residents get their drinking water, and the village has re requested a water quality inspection from the government. Okay. Where was that at? Back? Where was... <laughs> Where do I need to go? Oh, there is a contact point. Aha, found the book. All right, confidential document number nine. Date, uh, November 4th, 1979. Case name, discovery of skeletal remains. Processing, unreported due to death of person in question. Report. On October 23rd, Mikumo Village X resident X was X, and skeletal remains were discovered. Results of an analysis of the clothing worn by the remains proved that the body was that of X, missing since October 31st, 1977. The boys he was after, it's thought that he had been in contact with the boys in order to publicize the truth. Part of the report said to have been fabricated by investigator X states the following. The children's eyes looked extremely sad. The eyes of one of them, X. Another's mouth, X. The two children named X-Key and X-Key were clearly hiding it. 
the looter, the leader, Su Yi. Is this a fucking fairy tale? Protests. Marches. Kids. Parades. A princess and heroes. And a huge serpent. There really is a fairy tale town. Ikumo 77. Hey, big dick. What can I do? Let's go see his ass off. Yeah. Yeah, I have a bad feeling about this. I think our friend Sumio might have committed a crime in the past. All right, August 2nd, 1999, Monday. Over Mikumo 77. Uh, 12.36 a.m. Searching the area. Here it is, Tetsu. Ah, the Twilight Town. Everyone is coming to contact with this town at some point. How nostalgic. It's been, what, like 20 years? Yeah, that sounds about right. Well... Looks like during that time, this became the kind of town nobody wants to come near. That's right. This town has been waiting for us. Look at enough time and effort. Yeah. The final parade. So they had to do it up big. You happy now? Sorry. Looks like there's gonna be fireworks. Wanna go watch them? That's it. So clearly it's all Julius Caesar's fault and he did deserve to be stabbed. Ma'am, you might want to get out of that chair. I don't know what's happening to you, but it's probably not anything good. Is it over? Yeah. Why are you gonna why are you going this far? To kill the past? What's in the past? All of me. Fucking idiot. You're a fucking idiot, you know that? Finally. I've become an idiot. Let's go. Yeah. Keep confident. Yeah. Dare hatred right in the face. Yeah. Move forward. Yeah. Sometimes the past is important. Your real fight starts here. If you feel like you're gonna buckle, just remember. Excuse me, are you Mr. Kasabi? Who the hell are you? As of today, I'm your new partner, Kodai. Kodai? Never heard of you. You got the wrong unit or something? No, I was assigned here. I got no use for career types. Fuck off. Actually, I'm just a high school graduate. Oh yeah? Then why are you wearing that suit? Just personal preference. What the fuck? You look bad. Do I? That ain't gonna work. Huh. What's your name? Huh? 
Your first name. The one your mommy and daddy gave you. It's Sumio. Sumio Kodai. Alright, Sumio. Follow me. To where? What do you mean to where? We're gonna go get you a suit. I'm fine, thanks. Come with me. I'll hook you up. Really? It's fine. Hurry the fuck up. I really don't need one. Tetsu, we got a call. Where? The Tsubaki Syndicate. Let's go, Sumio. Okay. Tetsu? You ended up never buying me a suit, huh? Whatever, just walk. My suit. Yeah, yeah, I'll buy you one. Awesome. Once you're an old man, that is. Keep confident. Bear it down. Live positively. That's right. Okay, let's go. All right, and we have finished Parade. And luckily this one we get some uh, information on on the other side. So uh, Kamui Drome is coming soon, and our word is regret. I still don't know whether those like chain together to mean something. July and August used to be the fifth and fourth months of the year on the Roman calendar, and they were named differently. Hmm, interesting. I know that like the reason why... I think it's one of them, July or August, has 31 days is because they didn't want, uh, the emperor at the time didn't want to have less days. Let's see. So, anyway, March. Are you trying to do math? Uh, so it must be August. August is Hachikatsu. Um, <laughs> so they just, like, took one from February. All right, placebo. Thank you. Part one. Go hang out with our turtle. A very cute, pretty turtle. Gonna fight the bartender. All right, July 7th, 1999, Wednesday. 9.08 a.m. Hmm. March used to be the first month of the year on the Roman calendar. Interesting. All right, this is annoying. Exactly. Tanabata. Wente. How the hell are we thinking we're gonna sleep through that? Ugh. What the fuck? Shit. A nightmare. Alright, back in our room with the weird bat poster. And our smoking habit. Nine o'clock? Not morning yet. I'll sue your ass. But first, I must check my turtle. And probably my computer is what they actually want me to check. Poor guy. He looks terrified. Alright, let's see what came in. Slash, found the bat. From Slash to Tokyo Morishima. Uh, attacking Skulba is actually pretty hardcore. So it took some time, but by reverse hacking the system... What the fuck is reverse hacking? I was able to pull up the user access logs. There were all kinds of things in place. People using proxies and jamming things up, but with their raw IP totally visible, etc. So anyway, here's what I found out. OS, NUnix 7, browser, GC505. Screen resolution, 800 by 600. Why does that matter? Uh, handle name, the bat. Access time, uh, let's see, 1999, April 15th, uh, 2250. Uh, gateway, B23 area, Axel.bb, gateway, junk at kipple.ne.jp. And it fucking starts again. Look, at this point, it would not surprise me if Red is the one who pays the bills, because obviously we do not. 
All right, let's see what our junk mail says. Today's word. Metaphysics is the finding of bad reasons for what we believe upon instinct, but to find these reasons is no less than an instinct. Godly. All right, time for our plant email. The amazing world of carnivorous plants. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Shadowy fairy Darlingtonia Californica. A perennial carnivorous plant grows directly up from the root. Its bottle-like leaves are green and approximately 12 to 15 centimeters long. The tips are clear between the veins. Has two winged parts named in order, in, sorry, in honor of American botanist William Darlington. Distributed throughout Western Oregon and Northern California. Topics. Warning. The Darlingtonia is weak to heat. We've opened a new meeting room on the website for the summer. We hope beginners and veterans can use it to help each other out. How to grow Darlingtonia Californica. Almost the same as Saracenia purpurea, but keep out of direct sunlight during the summer. Reader opinions, Hiromi Takeuchi. Looking from behind, my Darlingtonia looks like a snake holding a vase. What a cool carnivorous plant. Okay. What's going on out the window? God, I want to fucking scream. What the fuck? How am I supposed to know if the phone rings? You okay, Red? Hey. You feel like Bron's super huge and fucking with the construction downstairs? God damn, this is so annoying. I can't take it. Wanna go for a drive? Am I taking my turtle on a drive? I love this. Exactly. Vampire plant. Darlingtonia. All right. Working so damn hard every damn morning. Like, one disaster after another for us. Um, I don't think I should be writing a memo in the car, but whatever. <laughs> maybe he's special, or maybe all turtles are like this, but Red seems to be a real coward. He just wants to spend his days floating around, and if anything disturbs that, he gets all sensitive and starts flapping around in his tank, and then he stops eating. It's a hassle, but he's still lovable. How about the bad? The only thing I know is that he's one fucked up dude. I doubt whether he actually has anything to do with Kamui. Why did he break into that chat room that one time? Either he's a hacker using Kamui as a front, or a cracker who actually believes all this Kamui bullshit. One or the others. Other assumptions? Real name, Komori, or something bat-like in Japanese. Why he uses the name bat. Age? Little punk, around 14 or so. Blood type? AB, because again, remember personality we do by blood type uh personality like a brat or a bird or something has a ma mix of indecision and cunning fuck i'm bored anyway i got his mail address i doubt he'd reply but i'll try getting a hold of him again we probably shouldn't be doing this in the car unless we're secret secretly rich and this is like some self-driving tesla all right 3 28 p.m Construction crew has gone to lunch. Bat. Placebo. I'm getting sick of this shit. From us to junk.kipple.ne.jp. Hello, CU, CQ, CQ. To the bat. This is Morishima, the guy you picked a fight with a few days ago. You shouldn't have busted into our chat like that. Now I have your mail address. I don't know who you are, what you're trying to do, or whether you're a crazy fuckstick or a full-on crazy fuckstick. Get back to me. Let's talk about your homie Kamui. Anyway. Man, we talked really, uh... Tough for someone who is not tough at all. Um, and it fucking starts again. Jesus fucking Christ, man. Alright, July 8th, 1999, Thursday. 9.05 a.m. I love how I also have to suffer through this sound. 
this motherfucker. Head hurts. And it's probably not even for the cigarettes this time. How you doing, little buddy? Huh? Got his little head pulled in. Poor guy. All right, did we get anything back from the bat? We did. All right, subject parade. Guessing game, what's the answer? Number one, at the last moment, an intrusion, an old witch, a wink. Oil fries, nobody's there, just Joan the slut. Mom, dad, yourself, a stick, a log, a stone, dead. Made a slave by the bad guy. It's gotta be you or me. Who's missing? Number two, old mother Twitchit likes kisses. She turns over her long tail and with one eye stares. Give her a kiss on her cute little mouth. As thanks, she'll share, she'll share her tail. Old Mother Twitchit. Who is it? Number three. There was a crazy family riding a crazy horse running like crazy. Where did they get to? Number four. Some brothers picked up a corpse and buried it in a stone crave. Who killed Nate the kid? What the hell is this? The bat's address. A guessing game? What the fuck is this about? All right, today's word. Provide first to the man who does not take. If you want something, try getting on the person's good side. Oh my god, shut the fuck up. Fucking seriously. Shit, so does that mail actually mean something? What kind of thing pisses me off. Okay, fine. So I have to play a game, huh? At the last moment, an intrusion, an old witch, a wink. Oil fries, nobody's there, just Joan the slut. Mom, dad, yourself. A stick, a log, a stone, dead. Made a slave by the bad guy, it's gotta be you or me. At the last moment, an intrusion, an old witch, a wink. Oil fries, nobody's there. Just Joan the slut. Dad, mom, yourself. A stick, a log, a stone, dead. Made a slave by the bad guy, it's gotta be you or me. At the last moment, is it me or him? An intrusion, is it me or him? An old witch, maybe him? Wink? Oil fries, what the fuck? Who's missing? Who the fuck? I don't fucking get it. All right, let's head to Mulholland. Same day. Smoke shop, Mulholland. Gotta get some tobacco. Tobacco. 1.39 p.m. Filed seven. One carton of the regular. Here you go. Placebo, right? Yep. You know, my husband used to smoke these. Your husband, huh? He used to smoke these? So, you mean he's... Yeah. My husband kicked the bucket years ago. Right about now, he's probably smoking placebo. Up in heaven or wherever. If they sell them there. Oh, they sell them there. These have been around forever. The box has changed, though. My memories of my husband have been fading, which is sad. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, I'm going to gonna home. The... Construction should be done for today by now. There we go. Oil fries and a diet crude oil. Just a regular order at McDonald's. All right. 2.23 p.m. Apparently these people do not work very long. And we apparently went to take a nap. Which, actually, I can't blame him. But, like, I hate playing games. Fuck. Why the hell do I have to do this? Uh, hold on. Maybe Erika could. 
like, yeah, she'd be better at this than I would. She has two brain cells to rub together. Alright, to Erika Yukawa. Just guessing. I got a weird mail from that guy called the Bat. I'll forward it to you. What is this guessing game? Do you get it? I have no idea. Let me know if you figure it out. Also, from now on, I'm going to encrypt my mails. I'm using a program I used to use at the news agency. Are you able to read this? Alright, two, S Inohana. Get it on. Has a guy called the Bat ever been involved in the Kamui case? He's able to mess with systems on the net and apparently doesn't want people digging up stuff on Kamui. He contacted me online and told me not to fuck with Kamui. He also sent me some sort of riddle. He seems to know about that thing at Babylon. Let me know if you know anything. Alright, let's mumbo it out. At the last moment, an intrusion and old witch. Is this some sort of poem? Searching all over the net got me nothing. Nothing in the encyclopedia either. Nothing in the newspaper database. Not even anything in the fucking al farmer's almanac. Construction is finally finishing tomorrow. About fucking time. How you doing, Red? Hey, you get this? This guessing game thing? Are you even awake? Okay, brother. I'm gonna go to sleep too. Getting woken up like this every goddamn morning? We need us a fucking break, you know? Sleepy. Sweet dreams. My sweet little turtle. What a cutie. Alright, midnight. 12.03 a.m. We ever considered why that maybe we don't wake up at a normal time because we sleep until midnight? Saturday night. It's been a while since I slept like that. You're up too, huh? Morning, sleepyhead. <laughs> How you doing, Red? Huh? He's still he's sleeping again. Alright. From Erika. This guessing game is a riddle. You're probably supposed to look for keywords from this text. I don't know the answer, though. More importantly, who's the bad? The version of that encryption software you're using is too old. Alright, from Inohana. Looks like nobody named the bat was involved with the Kamui case in the past, but I agree he should be marked for the future. Find out who he is and report quickly. It's about time you sent some info worth the price I paid for you. I mean, I, I won't argue, like, I have an erratic sleep schedule as well, but also, like, not quite this erratic. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. Maybe if I get this quiz right, I'll win a trip to Hawaii. Fuck. Fuck this. I need food. Where are we going to get food at midnight? Apparently at the bar that we haven't broken off with, even though he called Red creepy. Alright, 1.24 a.m. At the last moment, an intrusion. Excuse me, what does that mean? Fuck if I know. Is it about someone's personality? Like... Someone who's intrusive? Like someone who intrudes at the last moment. So you've been listening, huh? But no, it's not about someone's personality. I guess. It's like this. At the last moment, an intrusion. An old witch, a wink, oil fries, nobody's there. Only Joan the slut. Dad, mom, yourself, a stick, a log, a stone. Dead. Made a slave by the bad guy. It's gotta be you or me. Hmm, I've heard that somewhere before. What, seriously? Uh, I know. It's from Mother Goose. What do you mean? Old word games, in English. Some of those words come from these games. 
Okay, then, can you figure this out? It's a riddle. The question for this one is, who's missing? The blind man. Really? Definitely. The blind man is missing. You're a genius. I like to do what I can. I'm going home. You are forgiven for talking shit about my turtle. Because otherwise, I don't know how I would have gotten that. I would not have, is the question. Answer. Whatever. Whichever one those are. Alright, 3.06 a.m. The blind man. What does this mean, and what is the bat trying to do? I have no idea. If there's one thing that I know for sure, it's that my nerves are totally on end, and I want to pluck the feathers from that bat or chicken or whatever is named asshole. And th those feelings are growing by the day. How you doing, Red? What the hell? Asleep? I mean, it is 3 o'clock in the morning, man. Exactly. We gotta bring our turtle to the bar so he can apologize in person. Alright. To the bat. Subject the first one. The answer to number one is a blind man. So, what if I... What do I get if I figure them all out? I'll get Etika to help again. Alright, July 9th, 1999, Friday. 9.05 a.m. Today, those goddamn big fucking asshole sons of bitches are finally finishing that construction. You really did great dealing with all that noise. You just keep on keeping on, Red. Good turtle. Not only his head, but he's got his hands and feet pulled in, too. You've got it rough, too. Poor buddy. All right, from DNNet, news update. New virus, Festa. If you receive an email titled Festa, please do not open it. If open, Easter.exe will be activated, wiping everything from your hard disk. Please share this text with as many people as possible. This doesn't seem like a chain message at all. Um, this is a new self-propagating virus, and according to AOR, it is not only very dangerous, but there is currently no way to deal with this. Please share this with as many people who access the internet as possible. All right, from the bat. If you get them all figured out, I'll tell you a fairy tale. After this, I'll answer your first question about what I'm trying to do and who I am. Fairy tale? What a fucking dickhead. All right, to Erika, about the bat. Remember when our chat at Skolba got disrupted? Around the time of the Kamui case. You got dropped from the net and could it, couldn't get back in? When that happened, some guy replaced you in it and interrupted our chat. That guy's handle name was The Bat. He started talking to me suddenly and told me not to look into Kamui. For some reason, he also knew about pa Babylon. So I hired a certain net detective to find his mail address for me. I mailed him and got that weird ri riddle email. I figured out the first one. I also figured out how to solve it. Probably. It's from some old Mother Goose thing. You know Mother Goose? With the right materials, the remaining three should be solvable too. Feel like getting together to solve some riddles? Give me back. Let's hook up and win that trip to Hawaii. Alright, today's word. Remnants from the eye of a demon. Even the most thorough searcher sometimes overlooks things. The noise is finally gone. Looks like the construction is finally finished. Alright, to Apricot Square. 
square. Square. All right, to the park. 11.09 a.m. Erika called me right away, and we met up in the park at my building. She bought a Mother Goose book. We put the book and the mail from the bat together and started looking for the answers to his little game. Without titles, it was hard to search them out, but this is what the first one is based on. Pinx Minx. The old witch winks. The fat begins to fry. There's nobody home but jumping Joan. Father, mother, and I. Dick stalks stone dead. Blind man can't see. Every knave will have a slave. You or I must be he. What a fucked up poem. So here's that. Here's the riddle. At the last moment, an intrusion, an old witch, a wink. Oil fries, nobody's there, just Joan the slut. Dad, mom, yourself, a stick, a log, a stone dead. Made a slave by the bad guy, it's gotta be you or me. Who's missing? The blind man is missing. So literally, the blind man. Even that bartender knew this rhyme. That dude's surprising. Maybe he really likes Mother Goose? I wonder. He does seem a bit weird. So, next is this one. Old Mother Twitchet likes kisses. She turns over her long tail and with one eye stares. Give her a kiss on her cute little mouth. As thanks, she'll share her tail. I've heard that before. Really? Old Mother Twitchet, right? Yeah. Hold on. Oh, I'm waiting. Okay, so Old Mother Twitchet was... Hmm. Uh, here it is. It's from this poem, look. What was the question again? Who is Old Mother Twitchet? Ah, I see. What is it? The direct translation of the original poem says this. Old Mother Twitchet has one eye. Each time she turns her long tail over and jumps a spot, she leaves part of her tail behind. Is she a needle? What the hell does that mean? The poem itself is a riddle. A riddle, huh? Listen. One eye leaves its tail behind. Therefore, Old Mother Twitch it is... Huh? A needle and thread. Ha! I got one right! I'm not going to get anything else right this entire game, but it's fine. Um, a needle and thread. So, what about the question? I don't know. But it looks like it means that a needle kisses thread. The fuck kind of kiss is that? Let's leave that for now. The answer for number two is needle and thread. What's next? Um, here's the third one. There was a crazy family riding a crazy horse running like crazy. Where did they get to? A crazy family. There's got to be a poem with a crazy family and a crazy horse somewhere. Another fucked up poem. Quit complaining and search for it. Whatever. I can't find it. Me neither. Wait, hold on. Waiting. It must be this. Which one? It's a bit long. There was a crooked man who had a crooked wife. They lived in a crooked town. They had three crooked children, and they were all crooked. A crooked father, a crooked mother, and three crooked children. They all got on a crooked horse and rode a crooked path. They rode day and night, and without anyone falling off, they continued to ride the crooked path. They arrived at the gates of hell. Old Nick was happy to see them. He welcomed them inside, but sadly, they were too loud, so Nick threw them out. Exactly, like, hit me with that hundred question kumite now. I can do this. I got one riddle right. I've got this. Hmm. That sounds right. So, where did the crazy family end up? Hell. That's the answer. Nice work. Yeah, I'm awesome. Anyways, now for the final problem. Here's the text. Some brothers picked up a corpse and buried it in a stone grave. Who killed and ate the kid? Some brothers picked up a corpse and buried it in a stone grave. There should be a similar poem somewhere. Come on, hurry up. You keep looking too. I am. Brothers and a stone grave. Brothers and a stone grave. Picked up a corpse. Is this it? What? I'm not 100% sure. Show me. Okay, here it goes. The poem says, My mother she killed me, 
My father, he ate me. My brothers gathered my bones from under the table and buried me underneath a large cold gravestone. That must be it. Okay, now we're getting the hang of it. So who killed and ate that kid? Mother and father. So the parents. Right. Awesome. Wow, we got all four. Let's try lining the answers up. The blind man, needle and thread, hell, parents. I have no idea what that means. Me neither. I wonder if this really means something. What is he trying to say? The bat. Is it really worth chasing after him? I don't know. But I feel like it is. A gut feeling? Something like that. But after all this work, what if it's just some creepy loser messing around? Don't even say that. I mean, these answers, they don't seem to mean anything. No. But there must be something. There's meaning in there, somewhere. You really think so? Yeah. You think it has something to do with Kamui? I think so, yeah. Why? I think so. You think so? Look, the way you say that, can you just not do that? The way we treat Eddie Kaman, like, she could do so much better than us. Alright, off to Typhoon. Memo. The Morishima Memo. Maybe I'm letting the bat get to me too much. Like Erika says, maybe he's just some crazy fuckstick with no relation to Kamui. But for some reason, he took the trouble to hack that trap room and follow me on the net. The bat gets to me because I'm scared. Even now, I'm still somehow scared of Kamui. The same way I can somehow feel a kind of terror in this guy, too. Erika doesn't get that, because she didn't talk to the bat. Either way, I got my keywords. Now I just have to wait for the door to unlock. Alright, to the bat. This is all of them. The answer to number one is a blind man. The answer to number two is a needle and thread. The answer to number three is hell. The answer to number four is both parents. I got them all, right? So tell me who you are and what you want, as promised. Ah, uh, back to the... Cup noodles. 7.51 p.m. Exactly like... Eddie Kai and Kyoko would get along. I don't make the rules. The construction's finished. There's nothing else. Like, let me just say... Eddie Kai would see through Kyoko's disguise. Easy. Alright, 9.09 a.m. Uh, shut the fuck up. Be quiet. Huh? Huh? The politician's outside. I can't hear the microphone. Scream? Seriously? Nightmare. Huh. The construction is finished, but I woke up too early. This is frustrating. The fuck are you smiling at? I read. Huh? You sleeping again? All the cigarette smoke, man. All right. From the bat. Hey, you got it. That's perfect. Congratulations. Okay, as promised, I'll tell you a fairy tale. A princess and three boys, only their memories. The clouds are dirty black and the village died out. Then a nightmare-eating chimera disappears along with the wind. From Erika. I've been thinking and I thought of something. I want to tell you directly, so call my cell phone as soon as you read this. From Inohana. You find out anything about the bat? 
Don't forget that you're supposed to report back to me right away. Again? Fucking assholes. Alright, to Inohana. Still investigating. Can report soon. Give me a bit more time. Fucking Christ. Fucking Attica. You're the one who said not to call you anymore. Calling Attica's cell phone. Been a while. Hello? It's me. I saw your mail. Oh, thanks. So? What's it about? I just thought of this, but... Hold on. Let me find some place to talk. Okay. Hello? I can hear you. I thought of something. For those quizzes, maybe the whole poems themselves have more meaning than just the answers. The whole poems? Basically, the poems themselves are what contain some sort of message. Hmm. But don't you think that the bat is just some weirdo who's into riddles? Well, yeah. But I decided to trust your gut feeling. Wow, I'm really moved to tears. By the way, I've got something to report myself. Did the bat say something? I got another email. I sent an answer and I got a new one. It's about the fairy tale he mentioned before. I'd like to read it. If you can make it out this afternoon, I'll be in the park. Okay, see you later then. That park. It's turning into my special meeting place with Erika. We're like little kids, just swinging on the swings. Alright, back to Apricot Square. All right, 2.23 p.m. I met with Erika at the park. Same as yesterday. I showed her the new mail from the bat, and we thought about what it might mean. It may mean nothing, but Erika was deep in thought. This bothers me even more than the last riddles. Really? To me, it just seems like some pretentious-ass bullshit text meant to sound meaningful. A princess and three boys, only their memories... A princess and three boys. The date on this is weird. The date? Look, it says August 2nd, 1979. The time doesn't make any sense either. Oh yeah, 1979. That's 20 years ago. 20 years ago. There's something there, but... What the hell? Some incident? An incident from 20 years ago? Yeah, maybe. So I guess there's a meaning to it. This fairy tale. The clouds are dirty black. Dirty? What happened? The village died out. What does it mean? I don't remember something, Adika. Hold on. I think I've... Really? Just shut up for a second. Okay, fine. I'll be quiet, princess. I'm gonna have a smoke. Pollution. What? Huh? There we go. Tokyo and Erika sitting in a tree. Pollution! Yeah, that's it! The village disappeared. What are you talking about? Twenty years ago, there was a village called Mikumo. It got all messed up from pollution. The village disappeared. And then... A girl was killed too. That's it! It has to be... That's gotta be it, Erika. This fairy tale is about that village. Yeah, it has to be. Nice work. I knew you had it in you. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Oh. Sorry. Before... What? We used to work together like this a lot. Yeah. Back in the day. Never mind. We don't have time to reminisce. We have to check out Mikumo. Let's split the work. I'm going back to the office. Okay. Contact me if anything comes up. All 
All right, time to figure out how this village disappeared from pollution. Because thank God, Erika has three brain cells. Because heaven knows we don't, or we just don't use them. All right, back to eating ramen noodles. What do you see, Mama? I looked into Mikumo. Mikumo 77. Over 20 years ago, it used to be a village. Eventually, Mikumo Village was developed as an industrial area. Then it became a town, and pollution became a problem. Then the factories were shut down indefinitely, and now that area is managed by the government and is completely off limits. It basically became a trampled on, cursed area. News about that girl getting murdered still remain in old newspaper articles. This is another fucked up story. But why is the bat talking about this stuff? What does he have to do with Mikumo? What does Mikumo have to do with Kamui? Yeah, I know I'm coming. Hello? It's me. You got something? I found an old man from Mikumo 77. An old man? Didn't everyone from Mikumo die off? This guy survived. I found one of the few survivors. I'll make an appointment with him. I'll go see him tomorrow. Hold on. You should just go see him without making an appointment. Why? Because I doubt it's going to be a happy, fun story. You're right. He's old, so you better go see him before he kill keels over and dies. What a dick. Alright, the word of the day. Pick up your axe and jump into the abyss. Just as an, as an axe is useless underwater, outside of the appropriate situation, even useful tools can be a burden. I know this is heading somewhere, but somehow, I feel like something's off. I got a bad feeling. All right, July 11th, 1999, 2.26 p.m. about something. You sleep well too? Good bud. Alright, today's word. The cautious remain unscathed. Be careful and you won't make mistakes. Careful, huh? Even when careful, you can still get lost. Like if your map is wrong. Okay then. Ikumo. I think that was it. What a fucking hassle. Maybe I'll just ask the bat directly. Alright, 10.02 p.m. Sleep? Yeah, because it's 10 o'clock at night. He's a turtle. He needs lots of sleep. This beauty sleep. Alright, from Erika. Met the old guy. I met with that, with that old survivor. I get what you mean. He's a weird old man. Even though I'm right in front of him talking, it feels like, I'm s like he's staring a mile away while speaking to you. It seems like he doesn't care whether or not I even exist. That Mikumo 77 pollution problem was caused by the Yukimoto group, according to the old man. It was actually the Yukimoto group that pushed for the development of Mikumo 77, though. Also, he told me a creepy story, another damn fairy tale. 
What he told me was this. A demon marked a girl with a seal that would bring disaster. The people were all baffled by it. Some boys surrounded the girl to protect her, but the people had turned into a violent mob and took her away. The innocent girl had her feathers plucked and was sacrificed. So it was another story about a girl and some boys. There's a continuation, but it makes no sense. I have no idea what this guy is trying to say. Each of the death, each of the kids in this story is either blind, deaf, or dumb, apparently. Additionally, he says that the factory was producing weapons to fight off an alien invasion. What the fuck, right? If it were you, you probably would have t tossed your tape recorder in the gutter at that point. But I feel like there's some truth mixed in with the old guy's stories. People would turn into a violent mob, etc. Hey, do you remember the origin of the bat's third riddle? The crazy story, the story about a crazy family riding a crazy horse to hell? I think that story may be referring to this violent mob. Alright, Dan Net. Yukimura Mansion Blow Up. Newsflash, at approximately 9.50 a.m. today, July 11th, the home of the Yukimura Group Chairman Yukimura suddenly erupted in flames and explosions. It appears to have been caused by a bomb. So far, no one appears to have been injured. Neither the police nor news agencies have received contact from anyone claiming responsibility. The Yukimura Mansion? What the fuck is going on? So now we're finally at the beginning of the first of the uh, earlier case. When we watch the mansion blow up. Off to the precinct. Office 24. 11, 11 p.m. Make a wish. Wait a second. At least tell me what the hell happened. I can't say shit. Go back home for now. I don't have time to waste with hacks. Hold up! In that case, I want to say something. Next time. We're on emergency call right now. You hear the sirens, right? But... Anyway, keep out of this shit. Hey, wait! Fuck, what the hell is going on? All right, Tsuki, part two. Twelve days later. We were all dead. What just happened? Let's see. That's a good question. Like, I don't remember what the first emergency... Oh, the first emergency was probably the chairman being kidnapped. So I wonder if that was what the siren was in relationship to. Alright, let's find out what has happened in 12 days. Morning, Red. All right, from Erika. Subject rumors. After that weird thing with the Yukimura mansion getting blown up, it looks like something has happened to Chairman Yukimura himself. It's still just a rumor, but most of the rumors from this particular news agency turn out to be true. So plenty of care will be required for info concerning the Yukimura Zaibatsu. Stock prices too. It's pretty apparent that the higher ups here at my company are acting strange. I assume there's gonna be some sort of press embargo. Something's happening to the Yukimura group. Maybe threats from the bomber or something? By the way, you went to Mikumo 77, right? Find anything new? How about contact from the bat? It can't just be a coincidence. We find out about that stuff at Mikumo 77, and then the home of the chairman of the Yukimoto group, which basically killed the town of Mikumo, gets blown up. Maybe the bat tipped someone off? He must know something. Or possibly he himself was the bomber. When you saw the news about the bombing, you said that you felt something too, right? How do you plan to move? What the hell are the HC unit guys doing? I can't get a hold of them. No. I think the bat is suspicious too. I went to Mikumo 77 for three days. 
Of course, I wasn't able to set foot in inside of the factories, but it was still surprising to see that it had been left as is for the past 20 years. Mikumo 77 is like a ghost town now. Nobody lives there. The buildings are all old and fucked up. The roads are filled with potholes. Looking from higher ground, the old factories show off a black silhouette. The factories are relatively small. The small factories take up all the space with almost no open areas, like some weird plants cropping up, or like guts made of metal or gathered together all dead. What happened to Yukimura? Was he killed? Or kidnapped? Or maybe the HC unit is protecting him? Either way, like Erika said, it's certain that something is going on with him. Maybe I should hurry back and report on the info I brought back from Mikumo 77. I probably know who did it. Alright, today's word, the drunkard, the safer. Drunkards rarely get hurt. Those who stop giving a shit somehow tend to avoid making mistakes. All right, where are we off to? Are we just going to type and drive again? Like it's super safe. All right, 3.53 p.m. En route. Shit, if this ends up being pointless, I'm gonna lose my shit. Morishima Memo. I went to the HC unit and grabbed a guy named Morikawa and gave him a message for Kasabi. I said I wanted to give him some materials concerning Mikumo 77, but it's no good. He obviously wasn't taking me seriously. The guys in the HC unit are out for blood and they're probably not seeing what's right in front of their eyes. Regarding Yukimura, it looks like they have no intention of telling me what's going on. I guess private citizens don't have the right to know. Well, I don't have to tell them shit either, you know. The three kids from the old man's fairy tale. The princess who died is the girl. This is for sure. According to old newspapers, a seven-year-old girl was killed. The person responsible was caught and punished. However, there are many points of doubt in this case, and the injuries sustained by the girl were so bad that they did, couldn't have been done by just one person. They apparently found blood of different blood types in her body. In the end, the story was wiped out quickly, and everyone forgot about it. But if it was a violent mob who killed the girl, then stuff starts to make sense. There are some really intriguing analytical reports about the victims of the pollution at Mikumo 77. Those affected suffered from terrible asthma and overwhelming fatigue mainly, but on top of that, it wasn't known at the time that the hazardous waste can turn, contained a certain type of narcotic substance which possibly really fucked people up. This narcotic substance has a stimulant effect which causes violent obsession. Maybe this turned the people to turn into a violent mob, which is why the girl was killed. So that leaves the two boys who tried to protect the princess. Of these three people, one was, de one was blind, one was deaf, and one was dumb. If the old man's story is correct, 20 years have passed and they've become adults. What are they, and where are they, and what are they doing now? I'm almost certain that it was those two boys who blew up the Yukimura mansion. However I look at it, that's the only thing that makes sense. I wonder how Kusabi will react to those materials. Can that dude even understand those fairy tales? Also the bat. Erika's theory that the words to the riddles themselves have a meaning seems to be correct. A blind man. Is that one of them? Who is the bad? And what about Kamui? Is Kamui even somehow connected to Yukimura? The HC unit is really on the move. Something is still happening. What the hell is going on? Getting revenge 20 years after the fact. Apparently, we just drove around in a circle for a bit. July 24th, 1999, Saturday. 11.30 a.m. I guess technically all driving is just in a giant circle, since you always go back home. How you doing, Red? It's like... I get all excited for some reason. I wonder why. 
What do you think? All right. From Inohana, warning. You find out anything about the bat? We've already been over when and how you first came into contact with him. This shit is no longer going to fly. I need some info from you. With all these extensions for your reports, you've already broken your contract. If you don't reply within 48 hours, drastic measures will be taken. You will be in a world of shit. All right, from No Name. Welcome to Festa, uh-oh. Open this executable, I can't move the cursor. So this is gonna be fun. Congratulations! It's the famous Festa, yay! Uh-oh, you're already fucked, so no stopping it now. You're getting totally reformatted. Your computer is now fucked. Everything on it, everything is going away. Now there it goes, but before that, I have something interesting. So anyway, see you again, bye-bye! hell is this? Fuck. I think I've been hit with a virus. I guess. Shit. God damn it. Motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, okay, I got it. Okay, sorry, but I've got my shit all backed up and compressed and loaded to my laptop. So, you know, go fuck yourself, virus. Oh, that's fun. There are some really interesting games um, that have to do with computer memory, and I I just love the idea. You can really screw with things. Fireworks, huh? The Yukimura Mansion. Now the explosions start. Maybe they're trying to set it up like some sort of festival. Criminals sure do love blowing shit up real good. Why is that? Who the fuck... Hello? It's me. Oh, hey, Kusabi, right? I heard from Morikawa. Oh, that's good. There's something regarding Mikumo 77 that I just have to talk to you about. Okay. But wait. Can't give out any info right now. Listen, Yukimura is fine. Other than that, I can't say shit for now. Who was the bomber? We're looking into it. There should be two men left who were originally from Mikumo. It may have been them. I see. You have some kind of lead? No. But... Try checking that place out. Mikumo. Listen up. People's lives are at stake. So don't say shit about this to anyone. We aren't letting anyone from the media get anywhere near this. If anything got leaked to the bomber and it gets found out, everyone involved will be fucked. Of course I won't. That's all for now. I'm hanging up. Not even so much as a thank you. So, Yukimura's okay. Something's definitely going on. Shit, I'm all out of leads. What the hell do I do now? I'm all out of leads and my computer's screwed. Totally fucked. Red, lend me your wisdom. You're not just living in elegance, right? I mean, you can't understand me anyway, but still. Yeah, the old guy. Alright, let's go drive around again. 1.32 p.m. I can't rely on the HC unit. I'm sick of waiting for mail from the bat, too. If I'm going to proceed further, I'm going to have to talk to the old survivor from Mikumo. He'd know who the two boys were. I need to move.
All right, Yami Kumo Apartments. 2.14 p.m. I went to the address I got from Erika, and it ended up being a small, dingy apartment building. When I knocked on the door, an old man with the veins bulging out of his temples stuck his face through. He looked a bit clammy and sick. I came to ask you about Mikumo, I told him. For some reason, he seemed to smirk at my statement. He invited me into his apartment with a smile. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm not in the best of health. I see. Go ahead and lie down, don't mind me. So, what do you need? There were three kids in Mikomo, right? Oh, the kids. Yeah, they were there. I want to know what happened to those kids. You got any smokes? Huh? Oh, yeah. Here you go. This man is in poor health and he's just going to smoke his life away. Okay. Please, tell me what you know. Hey. What is it? That's good. These are some good smokes. That's wonderful. But yeah, that was some terrible stuff. You mean what happened 20 years ago? Those kids had grown up together. They were really close. Always getting into mischief together. And? While I was sleeping, they shaved my beard off. Like, really cleanly and nicely. Ah, wait. That was my grandkids. Come on, buddy. Oh, uh, yeah. Those three kids had a leader, born into a poor factory worker's family. What's the name again? Really clever kid. Is that princess? The right-hand man. Oh yeah, it was a boy named Huyuki. He didn't talk much, but he was a smart kid. So that's the first guy. There was another selfish little boy named Kiseki too. So that's the second guy. And what happened? What happened? Some really bad stuff. They ganged up on the kids, did some horrible stuff to them. What did they do? The first kid, they gouged his eyes out. And they sewed his eyes shut with a needle and thread. Another one had his mouth filled with oil and sewn shut. The last one had his ears stabbed out with a stick and had his eardrums crushed. He no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. Seriously? So that's... the... That's what happened to him. So, who is see no evil, who is speak no evil, and who is hear no evil? As far as who is which, that's all lost in the fog of my memory. So then the bat is... We did not go very far. Exactly. Grandpa's beard is old and gray. Grandpa combs it every day. Um, 20 years ago, there were three friends, a girl and two boys. For some reason, the girl was horribly assaulted by the violent mob of people from Mikumo and was raped. The two boys tried to save her, but they were captured by the violent mob. The three had their eyes, ears, and mouths shut. This is what the riddle from the bat was talking about. They were drenched in oil or just attacked with it, stabbed, and were sewn up with a needle and thread. Who was eaten by their parents? That means their parents turned a blind eye to what was happening to them. The bat can write males, so he either can't speak or can't hear. The one who had their eyes gouged out or sewn up and sewn up was either the girl or the one who isn't the bat. The one who had oil poured into their mouth and had it sewn up was also either the girl or the other one who isn't the bat. And now the two boys are attempting to get revenge for what happened 20 years ago. They're after Yukimura, the one responsible for causing the pollution and everything else. When I get home, I gotta restore my desktop PC. Oh, before that, I gotta clean out the turtle's tank. Is this some nursery rhyme I don't know? About Grandpa's beard?
All right, July 25th, 1999, Sunday. 1.12 p.m. That's fine. Well, the hard disk is clean. I guess this will do just fine. All right, Inohana, final warning. I'm warning you, if you don't reply, your contract will be terminated. You're almost out of time. All right, to Inohana. My computer got fucked up by a virus and I couldn't send any mails. Sorry about that. About the bat, he must be a commonly believer. I heard his name among some rumors on the internet. He hasn't mailed me back yet. Apart from that, I have absolutely no info. So conversely, if you've got any info, I'd like you to share it with me. I'm still investigating and I'll keep going. Just a quick note, that's all. Way to kick the fucking hornet's nest. I can't tell the client about the time the bat crashed into my chat. It would break my non-disclosure agreement as I was chatting with Erika. I can't explain that. Why was the girl at Mikomo raped and beaten? There must be a reason she was sacrificed. If I know who she was, I could probably figure that out too. All right, word of the day. The eagle does not catch flies. Even if an eagle is starving to death, it won't reduce itself to eating garbage. All right, time to go drink at the bar. Nine fifty seven PM. It's been a while. I guess it has. By the way, whatever happened with those riddles you were talking about? Oh yeah, those. I finally worked them all out. Then I went on a little trip. I knew it. So you want a trip after all. Thanks to you. In that case, how about a drink? I guess I have no choice. Fix yourself one of whatever you like. We're friends with the bartender again, apparently. All right, July 26th, Saturday, 2.08 p.m. Time to smoke some more. Morning, Red. That bartender got me absolutely shit-faced last night. Whatever, it's fine every once in a while. Alright, DNNet, news update. Yukimura Mansion bombers commit suicide. The perpetrators of the bombing of Yukimura Group Chairman's Yukimura Mansion on July 11th were found to have committed suicide. According to reports, there were two suspects, both of whom were unemployed with no known address. Currently, the location, time, and motive for the suicides have yet to be publicized, but the police are expected to make an announcement soon. Erika, follow-up report. With the press embargo, this is still top secret, but it looks like Chairman Yukimura was kidnapped. The kidnappers were two people from Mikumo 77, Fuyuki and Hiseki. But Hiseki died immediately after y the Yukimura Mansion bombing, so it looks like the main perpetrator was Fuyuki. Although there was an embargo on Fuyuki and Hiseki's suicides too, it was broken. Hiseki was blind, and Fuyuki, the one who, killed the who jumped in the smokestack and killed himself, was a deaf mute. Now don't freak out, but both men had their eyes and mouths sh sewn shut. So most of what the bat said matches up. I never thought this whole thing would get this bad. But why did those two return Chairman Yukimura unharmed and then kill themselves? Maybe he said he'd die and messed up their plan so Fuyuki decided to die too? Something's definitely not right here. This whole case is still full of mysteries. 
All right. From the bat. Parade. This mail has been sent set to reach you on a specific date. I'm not the bat. My name is Hiseki. This is probably pretty disappointing for you. When I first received your mistaken mail, it was kind of fun. And so as thanks, no, actually as a prank, I chose you to be a spectator for my little parade. You were apparently quite a good spectator. I'm happy about that. Do you like parade fireworks? The bat was Hiseki. No. I just thought he was the bat, but it turned out that I happened to have been talking to Hiseki all along. But why was he able to write mails even though he was blind? I mean, I don't know what um, accessibility was back then in 1999, ages ago, for us old people. All right, back to Mulholland. Got to get some more smokes. Two forty-two p.m. One carton of the regular. Here you go. Placebo, right? It's hot again today. Well, it's summer, so... Uh, by the way, do you have good eyesight? Not especially. I can just make out the 88 on that big sign way over there. That's actually B.A. from Bath. Oh. I guess I didn't notice. It's not a problem of noticing. What do you do when you watch TV and stuff? I turn the volume way up so I can see properly. Turning the volume way up. That's basically the same as seeing, right? Wait a second. Found. Exactly. Just because he can't read doesn't mean he can't write. He just can't read what he's writing. Good way to look at it. All right, 7.24 p.m. Back to our cup noodle. Memo. It turns out that the blind internet, the blind internet users aren't rare at all. There are all sorts of systems for the blind, like voice input, text reading functions, all kinds of shit. I feel like Hiseki's the kind of guy you can't just can't hate. He was almost definitely the bomber, but apart from that, when I think about our back and forth via mail, he really had good sense for that sort of prank. I don't know how good of a spectator I was, though. Alright, to Erika. I received my final mail from the bat, or Hiseki, rather. I'll forward it to you. He likely died because of what they planned to do. I think the stuff these guys were doing was all part of the plan from the beginning. The HC unit is probably handling Yukimura's kidnapping. Either way, since the guy's really well known, the embargo should be on for a while. It'll be a while before I can get info from the HC unit again. I wonder if Yukimura's really in harm. Considering Hiseki and Fuyuki's feelings, it's pretty hard to think that Yukimura would come back totally unscathed. I don't care about the mystery anymore. Once the media gets hold of this, all the bullshit is going to start flying again. Whatever. Anyway, apparently while I was searching for the bat, I ended up finding a different one instead. The blood-sucking type. Pretty fucked up dude. I wonder if they ever made it to the princess after all. <laughs> July 27th, 1999. Tuesday. 10.48 a.m. Wow, this is early for him. Morning, Red. Been getting up pretty early recently, huh? Well, maybe not that early. Alright, from Erika, Faber. It looks like something happened to the old survivor from Mikumo. I got a call from the old lady living next door to him this morning. She didn't know who to call, so she saw my business card and called me. 
At this point, it looks like he'll be okay, but he could take a turn for the worse at any time. I want to go talk to him ASAP, but all sorts of stuff about the Yukimura news has been popping up and I can't get away. Would you go and check on him for me, please? Get a hold of me later tonight and I should be able to drive out there. I guess it's best to talk to the old man before he dies off. That may end up not even being a joke. Alright, word of the day. Turn your hand up, the clouds. Turn it down, the rain. Human nature easily changes like turning your hand over and is unreliable like the changing of clouds and rain. All right. Off to the hospital? Maybe? In the car. 2.31 p.m. There's some really fishy shit going down. I guess I should hurry. Nope, apparently we're going to the apartment. Three twenty PM. I hope that the old dude's okay. Huh? Oh. Do you have any relatives close by? I've been living here on my own for years now, but the old lady next door takes good care of me. Oh, I do okay. Really? By the way, you're... Uh... Oh, it's you. Do you really remember me? Yeah. Fuyuki. Good to see you, boy. It's Morishima. I'm Fuyuki's friend. I see. Yeah. I know the name of one more, too. Kiseki. No, wait. Kiseki. Oh, yeah. And the girl. Iru. Iru. That's her name? Yeah. A relative of the Yukimura family. The Yukimura family? Let's see. So, so this Diru girl was sacrificed by the crazy mob because of her ties to the Yukimura family. You didn't know that. No. Sorry, it's the first I've heard of it. The fourth poem. Eaten by their parents. So that's what it meant. And one more. Huh? The deaf one. I remembered. Huh? What are you talking about? The deaf one. That was Diru, wasn't it? Izaki, have you forgotten? What? Your... your boss, right? Who... who is? Come on, buddy. Old man. It's still too early to die, just die yet. I can't believe you've forgotten. I guess you must... You must have gone soft in the head, too. What fuck are you talking about? My boss? Was there one more person? Oh. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? This guy, man. Who? Oh. I mean, it could be a cult, but probably it's more just that everyone was really fucked up in the head. Because they were all drinking polluted water. All right, five days later. Back to our apartment. August 1st, 1999, Sunday. 12.58 p.m.
Morning smoke. In bed. God, your sheets would smell like tobacco smoke, and I just... Ugh, I'm not into that. Morning, Red. That fairy tale, it's gonna be over soon. Alright, today's word. Rain stopping at night means rain. Rain that stops falling during the night will rarely last long. Our weekly carnivorous plant. Carnivorous plant world celebrity, Nepenthes rafflesiana. A hanging perennial plant, its leaf tips have a 10 to 15 centimeter bug catching bags. The top is cylindrical and the bottom is egg shaped and green. It is also sometimes becomes reddish. It is a hybrid of the Nepenthes cassiana and the Nepenthes gracilis, created in 1963. 50 people can win a Nepenthes rafflesiana stuffed toy by a lottery. At 60 centimeters, it's perfect for use as a pillow or cushion. Two types, red and green. A photo of the toy has been uploaded to the website. It's a really funny Nepenthes rafflesiana stuffed toy campaign now in progress. In, yeah, before it goes on sale in September. Check the website for details. How to throw it? Grow it almost the same as the Saracenia purpurea. Grow in a well-lit, humid place. When splitting the plant, be careful not to destroy it. Reader opinions, AK. I'm growing a Nepenthes ventricosa. Compared to other Nepenthes, this one is fat for some reason, but that makes it even cuter. Yes, cute plants. It's already August. It should be hotter. Shit, I totally forgot about whittling that wood. We should probably play with you too. What should we do? Hmm? Sorry, Red. I'll give you some shrimp later. Give him the shrimp now. You have a long cord on your phone. Hello? It's me. Eddie call? Did something happen? It looks like the embargo will be lifted any time now. The embargo, huh? If this were an embargo on Israel, I bet, I bet it would have been lifted years ago. Are you trying to be funny? Why do you always have to screw around like that? I'm not screwing around. This is just how I was written, that's all. Whatever. Listen. The weather hasn't been this nice in a long time, right? The weather's been pretty ugly recently, you know? Why don't we go fishing? Are you asking me out? It was worth a try, I guess. I'm hanging up now. Okay, bye. That's it, girl. Know your worth. You deserve better. Alright, news update. 11 dead in Snow Tower terrorist bombing. At approximately 11 p.m. on July 31st, Snow Tower, which houses the Yukimoto Group's headquarters, was blown up. The entire building was destroyed and 11 people were killed. Miraculously, there were fewer casual casualties than would normally be expected. The bombing is assumed to be related to the earlier Yukimoto Mansion bombing. At this point, nobody has come forward to take credit for the bombing. Additionally, the victims killed in the explosion were Yukimoto Group Chairman Yukimoto and 10 members of the board. Since it was a holiday, regular employees and security staff were away and therefore not injured. Look, if you're going to commit an act of terrorism, you might as well, like, make sure it only targets the people you want. I guess I'll get going, then. Alright. Other kitty PC. On Sepulchre Street. 4.44 p.m. CCCC. Or CCC. Hi. If you're looking for Tetsu, he's not here. Actually, today I'm here to see you. Me? I want you to tell me a fairy tale. Go ask your mommy. My mommy isn't here, and that blind kid is dead, so... It's a long story. But if you don't mind... A long story? Sounds nice. Don't blame me if you fall asleep partway through. All 
All right, August 2nd, 1999, Monday. 3.28 p.m. How you doing, Red? Morning, Red. Hot again today. All right, Dnet. News update: Mikmo 57, sorry, Mikmo 77 bombed. Today at noon, just 34 hours after the snow tower bombing, the Mikmo 77 area, once developed as an industrial area by the Yukimoto Group, was suddenly bombed, causing an explosion covering a four-kilometer radius. Considering the previous bombings, it's thought that someone attempting to destroy the Yukimoto Group is likely responsible. However, the perpetrator is yet unknown, and no one has yet claimed responsibility. Additionally, there are currently no residents in Mikuwa 77, and it is assumed that no one was killed or injured. Gotta see our word of the day. Friendship is a plant that needs watering often. To have a friendship continue indefinitely, you need to meet often and provide love often. Or you can stream three times a week with them, and you stay friends. You've gotten big again. How about it? We should go fishing together. Or maybe just sunbathing, I guess. Okay. I guess I'll just write it all up at once. Sumio answered almost all of the questions I had. All off the record, of course. I just showed him the four mails I received from Hiseki. Sumio checked them all. I'll call Sumio, Fuyuki, and Hiseki the Mikumo boys. The Mikumo boys were childhood friends. Sumio had been their leader for the entire 20 years. 20 years ago, there was a beautiful girl named Nidu Yukimura, who was like the three boys' idol. Nidu was, was raised in a branch family of the Yukimura group and is a distant relative. Nidu's family was given some of the Mikumo 77 land. Sometime later, the pollution problem at Mikumo 77 came to light. Mikumo was surrounded by a photochemical smog, and the river was full of water polluted by that narcotic. Soon, an anti-industrial protest at the factory would begin as well, with demonstrations filling the streets every Sunday. Residents sarcastically referred to this as the parade. The parade would get more and more lively each weekend, and then one day, the residents formed a violent mob and attacked the Yukimura house. The residents, all fucked up from the narcotic in the water, were terrified of the extremely beautiful and early maturing Nidu and received and believed she was a witch. Nidu became a symbol of the Yukimura family who had caused them so much pain and suffering. That day, Nidu's parents, terrified of the encroaching mob, left their daughter at home on her own and ran away. The hell, man. The Mikumo boys barely managed to save Nidu from the mob and brought her to the mountains to escape. But while Sumio was looking away, Nidu was taken away by the mob. Nidu was sacrificed and died. Because they tried to help her escape, an example was made of the three boys. For hearing Nidu's words and being enchanted, Sumio had his ears stabbed out. For seeing Nidu's cute disguise and being fooled, Hiseki had his eyes sewn shut. And for swearing allegiance to the demon Nidu, Fuyuki had his mouth sewn shut. And then... The Mikumo boys spent the next 20 years silently plotting their revenge on everyone. Sumio joined the HC unit. He became really good at lip reading and learned to control his intonation when speaking. He faked all of his physical tests at the Central Police Academy and bribed an examiner to pass him for the hearing tests. He used special radios and cell phones created by Hiseki to avoid being found out. Hiseki developed software that would convert incoming transmissions into braille. This software was installed into all communications devices by Sumio. The Mikumo boys' goal was simple, the complete and utter destruction of the Yukimura concern. They put their plans into motion. For the Yukimura mansion bombing, while Sumio gathered security for his stakeout, Fuyuhi kidnapped Chairman Yukimura and confirmed that there was nobody left at the house, and then Hiseki blew it up. After that, Hiseki committed suicide as planned to ensure that they couldn't be traced. He had already set up the bomb at Snow Tower before killing himself. At the same time, Fuyuki had Chairman Yukimura on lockdown. Fuyuki sent the two videos to Investigation HQ to show them that Yukimura was still alive. 
Kutomiya met with the locked up chairman several times and made a promise with him to get him to destroy the Yukimura group himself. Forced to make a painful choice, Yukimura finally agreed. Fuyuki demands the ransom. Once it's received, he throws himself into the smokestack. Another suicide, just as planned. Then, Chairman Yukimura blows up Snow Tower by his own hand. The Yukimura group has now been scattered to the wind. But the story doesn't end here. The Mikumo boys' final target was Mikumo 77. They still had the purification of the cursed land on which Mikumo 77 stood, and the release of Deiru's restless soul to take care of. Tomio didn't mention it, but there was no way the Mikumo boys would let that dilapidated town remain. Anyone who's seen the grotesque rem remnants of Mikumo 77 would agree. Does Sumio plan to die, or does he plan to atone by for his sins by continuing to live on? Where did Fuyuki and Hiseki's hopes lie? Of course, I have no idea. Princess Aurora slept the sleep of death at the top of the tower. Princess Aurora was reborn as beautiful as ever. But over the past 20 years, Deiru would have been mummified and her remains would be turning to dust by now. This parade that must have begun from the feeling that the princess couldn't be returned to is such a filthy place. Well, it wasn't just two boys. That's where I first fucked up. A very large percentage of placebo seems to be just Tokyo reading his emails. Um, and yet, like... Dude, this man took his accessibility stuff that he needed and used it to just girl boss. Gaslight gate keep girl boss. So, Sumio is a hero or something. Probably not a hero, although he isn't killing anyone, so. All right, to Edika, final riddle. I worked out the final riddle we had overlooked. By the way, August 2nd, 1979 was the day Didu died. As for the 75564, when I showed it to Sumio, he laughed and answered. Apparently, it was the secret code he told Yukimura to use to blow up the snow tower. Only the memories of the princess and the three boys. The clouds are dirtied black and the village died out. Then a nightmare-eating chimera disappears along with the wind. The wording was purposely confusing. This is just a simple joke, basically. This was the bomb warning that Hiseki gave me. A princess and the three boys, only their memories. Nikomo was dirty black, and once the Yukimura group had been wiped out, the nightmare-eating explosion disappeared with it. And we have finished the key. And actually, they did a pretty nice uh, little recap there at the end. So, I think we should all kind of understand what happened. Maybe. Possibly. But yeah, I'm going to guess that Sumio isn't going to show up much anymore. Alright, um, so we are going to end here for tonight. Uh, next stream should be... What day is today? Uh, today is technically Friday now. Um... Next stream will be Sunday. Yep. Uh, seven, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific. I do this every, like three times a week and I can't remember what the time is. Um, so yeah, we will be back then. Um, hopefully we'll be doing Danganronpa. If not, we might be doing some more of this. Um, we don't have Lemur next week, so it'll just be Mana and I kicking around. Um, so have a good night all wash your hands wear your masks get vaccinated um go blow shit up or something um and we will be back this weekend have a good night bye